Hey everybody. Actually, I should do. That way I can have the cover from the beginning of this. <laughs> hey everybody, it's me, Derek the Chocolate Botanist, and I am here to show you off this new series I'm doing to the people that are coming in. You came in because I bet you thought this live was about you, didn't you? You thought I mentioned you and I tricked you into coming in here. Look at the fit. Look at all the people coming in here to see me because I put in there mentioned you. It's a thing that the people do. And I trick y'all sometimes in order to show y'all the science. Hey there, Urban Gardener. I'm going to be talking about a new series I'm doing called Gardening Victoriously. If you are seeing this, please throw that into the comments. Hey there, James. Okay. Hey, Pastor. Hey, Pastor. When my pastor gets in here, y'all got to clap. Y'all got to clap. Y'all got to clap. clap real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Clap. Clap real quick. I got you good. I did. Okay. When my pastor comes in here, y'all best to be clapping, okay, or all your plants going to die. In Jesus' name. Anywho. Hey, Nora. So, I'm going to be talking about this new series. No, I never see you live and I wanted to. Y'all better be clapping. I hope y'all did. So, y'all go ahead and put Gardening Victoriously in the comments. Gardening Victoriously. That's the series I'm doing. I have a class I did some years ago. I still do it if you want me to do it, right? But with this class, oh yeah, I got a post about me being at the Southeastern. Thank you for mentioning that. With this class that I'm doing, Gardening Victoriously, the premise of it is, you see how the people dropped off when they figured out I wasn't talking about them? The premise of it is, Gardening Victoriously is based off of Victory Gardens. Victory Gardens was a whole thing that people did, especially around World War I, World War II, right? The people needed some form of joy. They didn't have the reality TV shows that we can go and look at today. They didn't just death scroll on TikTok. They couldn't watch some special models page and pay a certain subscription fee to see whatever they want, right? They had to find joy elsewhere. And the way they found the joy was through their gardening. They had these big, beautiful, luxurious gardens in their front yards because times were hard and they, like they are now to a certain extent, right? And people needed to be able to eat and to, to have something to bring them joy. Again, like an Anita Baker song. So if those of you coming in, type gardening victoriously in the comments and also like send this to two people. Usually I say a big number, but let's do two people. So this series, I'm going to show you my efforts to help you know that you too can be victorious in your garden efforts. In addition to the simple fact that like me, you can have a failure and still make a win, right? On my patio, I've had plenty of wins on the second floor balcony and I've had plenty of losses. We have a, we have a, a troll. We have a troll that doesn't like me. Oh, it's not barking at me. The dog is barking at somebody else. So, those of you coming in, gardening victoriously, please put that in the comments. Let's keep typing that up. Okay, let's throw some hearts. I'm up here on a Sunday, and I could be sleeping in my bed, but I'm here talking with you all. Okay, I shouldn't have mentioned the trick because we had 20 people deep. We could have kept it going at 100. We probably could have got 100, but it's okay. We're going to keep going. So on today, I just gave you a brief overview of that whole series, Gardening Victoriously. I'm going to show you different things I do outdoors, right, on my patio. That's an urban gardening flair. And as you can see behind me, I have some beautiful plants. We're going to be propagating this today. This is a bee balm. I have beautiful things in general. Let me show you all what the patio looks like because we cleaned it up. And for those of you following me here on Instagram where this was live, you should also follow me here on YouTube where this video will be. I know y'all are like, what? How do you move your lives from Instagram to YouTube automatically? I'll tell you one day. It's going to be a class. I figured out how to do it. I, I put some stuff together. Y'all going to have to pay. But it's going to be great. So... We're going to keep it moving. I'm going to show you all this patio because I cleaned it up a little bit. Okay. Now, before I show you all this patio, I did not make this factory clean. Okay. I need you to calm down if you are like, Derek said he cleaned his patio and it still look a mess. Because if that's what you do, then you can talk about somebody else. Just don't talk about me. Okay. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and flip. So this is the patio. And again, it's not the best in the world. I have an oxalis that kind of 
is doing its own thing thing. This has my cabbage collard that is doing it right. I have a sunflower. I did not plant this sunflower. I feel like the seeds fell off of some of the sunflowers I had a couple of years ago. Hey, hey, Jay. Um, I have my Asiatic lilies, my chickpea. Another sunflower, and this is a dwarf. I planted seeds last year, and I feel like this is one of the areas I planted seeds. Again, some of them might have fell. This is a valerian on my YouTube video. On my YouTube, you'll see me plant this. I haven't put it yet. I need to edit that video. And then this is the rest of the patio as of yet. And those of you who remember know it was just piled up with stuff, right? It's not perfectly clean, but it's clean enough for government work. So as a quick aside, I have this beautiful mojito mint. I moved some of this, which I think is an orange mint here this might be berries and cream actually i planted this i planted this berries and cream why do you look like this we're going to look at that later i also planted another berries and cream right here okay which the soil in these things it's been raining like cats and dogs it was even raining yesterday y'all see how dry this is so we're gonna have to work on that but this other one is sparkling wet ain't that crazy okay so berries and cream is a type of mint. You have different cultivars. Okay, I have my mint. Um, so you have like mojito mint, berries and cream, apple mint. It's a different type of mint. Sometimes it's a different species and sometimes it's a different just variety of the same species. Okay, we have my mullein right here. We have my bee balm, which we're going to be propagating. We also have some of them right here. Um, seeds, seeds were everywhere. Okay, they was shooting they wild oats everywhere. Okay, we have my elderberry. I know some of you are like, you have a tree on your patio. I do. We have my oregano, which I really should be doing more with this. Um, these are onions. This is a grass. We don't want that. Y'all didn't see me throw this over the patio. Then we have behind me a bunch of other random stuff, right? And then here's a, a day lily. I want an auction, a chocolate lily. So I have a lot of different things up here. Some tiger lilies. And I showed you all the Asiatic lilies. So there's no such things as a silly question unless people are trying to troll me. And then it's just, there we go. There's no such thing as a silly question unless people are trying to troll me. And then it's just silly for people to do that. So make sure we're charging here. There we go. Berries and cream actually does kind of taste like berries and cream. It's not like exactly one for one, but it is kind of in that vein. So while we are here, when you're live here with me on Instagram, you can ask whatever question you want to. I'm a whole plant biologist. Again, I'm Derek Haynes, the chocolate botanist. I have my bachelor's of plant biology from North Carolina State University. Go pack. Go pack. Wolf pack. And uh, I'm a whole scientist. I've worked in the field now since 2011. On and off. Like pretty much almost continuously though, since 2011. And it's 2024, so that's over 10 years. I'm an old man. When did that happen? We're not going to think about that in the gray in my beard. We're going to keep going. So for those of you who are here, you can ask me whatever questions, comments, and concerns you have, right? I'm going to answer your questions. For those of you who are seeing this in the future, you ask your question in the comments. I'm going to come there and put it, my answer and respond back to you. Sometimes I'll make a video if I can. I can't really do that on YouTube. Where I can like respond like I can on Instagram and just be like, boom, video, and you see my face and you hear my voice. But we're going to just keep it moving, okay? So somebody said, why plant biology? Why not? Why not? So, my roots are rough. So, I have always loved plants. I've always had a passion for plants. I come from the eastern part of North Carolina where I grew up around a slew of trees, a slew of plants, a slew of wildlife. Um, back during the 90s, and I think that area is probably now like a convenience store or something now. I can't even remember the last time I've driven by that area. But plants, to me, are just phenomenal. They're magical. They're inspirational. They're everything. Um, so that is why, hey there, Jugo man. I need y'all to follow. If you're in North Carolina, I follow the Jugo man. I need you to follow him if you're in North Carolina. Even if you're not, follow him. I had some of his 24 karat juice, I believe it was called. I need to go to the Black Farmer's Market. I've been tired. <laughs> and I know when I get out there, I, I say I'm just going to go for three things. I'm just going to go for three things. 
And then I'm like, I'm just going to go for three things. And it's two hours later and I've spent all of my money because I'm like black people. So please support him. Um, hey, Dana, 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 we need to catch up. I ain't seen you in a month of Sundays. So anyway, new series, Gardening Victoriously. I'm doing it on uh, a lot on YouTube where I'm going to show you long form content. For those of you who are like, what are you talking about, Derek? And it's going to be basically me showing you some gardening greatness, okay? And how you too can be victorious in your gardening, all right? I did a whole spiel at the beginning. I'm not going to repeat that again. It's going to be on YouTube. This video is going to be on YouTube when I'm done, so you'll be able to see it, okay? There we go. Oh, I don't know how I cut that on, but we're going to keep going because why not? I don't know exactly how I cut this on, but it is what it is. So... Boom, we talked about that. We talked about gardening. This is why I do plant biology. Um, I love it. I love plants. I love science. So this is why I'm in it to win it. Ah. So we're going to begin. I'm going to be propagating some of my bee bombs, okay? Now, there's a couple of ways I'm going to do this, right? And that couple of ways is going to really depend on my options and what I have at bay and in that stock, right? Now, why do this, right? So this is kind of a, a backdoor pilot, even though I already started the series on YouTube, Gardening Victoriously. You can see it on my YouTube right now, where I show you me cleaning off this patio. I show you me cleaning off this patio. But you can um, stay here for this video. I'm going to be doing something. Hey, Spoken, Allison, Sean. Hey. So also, again, y'all can ask questions while y'all are here. While we're live, if you want to join me and talk about my new series, feel free. So, just as long as you're not trying to sell anything. Like, if we talk a lot and you're trying to sell something, that's one thing. But some people be up here. Back in the day during the pandemic, people will come up here from overseas and they'd be like, I'm going to join your live and sell all my stuff. And I hated that. I hated that. So, we're going to skip over that because I'm getting distracted, right? I get distracted real easy. So, Gardening Victoriously, new series. It's, premier, it's already premiered on the YouTube as of today, right? And I'm just doing this live to kind of raise some awareness of it. Also, podcast is going to be starting soon. Um, Melanated Botany. And Melanated Botany is me and Stephen Jaunty. We're two black botanists with a slew of years of experience. And we're going to be talking about what that means and... Just in kind of the connection of, hey, Basil, Basil, I got to read your book. I've been thinking about you. I got to finish. I just got to start your book. Read it. I've had a lot of stuff going on. A lot of life has happened since you and I last talked. But I have been thinking of you and the thing we talked about in secret. Okay. Basil has a book, y'all. It's coming out. Y'all need to go ahead and pre-order it if it ain't already out. So, new series, the podcast coming out, I believe this month. You're going to be seeing a lot of Derek. For those of you who don't want to see a lot of Derek, that sucks for you. Okay, you're going to just have to take your eyes out of something. So we're going to be propagating some plants. Again, when you are considering doing anything that is victorious in your garden, the biggest thing you have to consider is you want to share that victory with other people. This is why I'm doing this series, right? There's a lot of people who have told me that they wished they could garden. They hoped they could garden, right? This is going to make good content later. I should really take this uh, this filter off. There we go. They wish they could garden. They hoped they could garden one day. And I'm like, well, just try it. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. And they give me a plethora of reasons as to why they cannot just put a seed in some dirt and water it and hope for the best. So... I do this to, to inspire other people, and you should also be one to inspire other people as well, right? So one way to inspire people is to give them a plan, right? Something that you and them can be connected over, okay? Why is that important? They can look at that plant and they can think of you. I'm going to answer that question in a second, Calamity Ray. They can look at the, uh, that plant and think of you. And this could be even in house plants, right? You can garden victoriously in your house and have a bunch of house plants. I do it all the time, right? But we're going to focus on the outdoors because it's beautiful. It's almost like it's still spring. We ain't all the way summer yet. And we're going to keep it moving that way. So I'm going to be propagating and giving away some of my bee balm. We're going to bring you closer with me. I want you to feel like you're here with me. And I want you to feel like you're as tall as I am, even though I know you're not. Most of you don't know how tall I actually am. Let's see if y'all can guess in the comments. So we have this bee balm. Bee balm is a beautiful plant. 
I don't remember the genus and the species. My phone is right in front of me. I usually try to look this up before I get up here so I can make sure I have it right. But Derek doesn't remember that. Derek does know it's in the genus of Laminaceae, which is the mint genus. The mints are very particular because not only do we love them, right? Uh, mm, one of you is stalking me because you got the, you got my height exactly right. Uh, or you listen real good. Bee bombs are in the mint family, and not only are they amazing, the mint family is because they smell good, they feel good, right? They have a square stem, right? So if I bring you all the way in, and again, you feel like you're right here standing beside me, breathing my air, almost touching me. You can see how this doesn't all the way look like rounded. You can almost see the square qualities of this baby mints are also dope because for the most part they are easy to propagate they are easy to do a vegetative propagation vegetative i'm using part of the actual green quality of this the vegetation of it all right words have meaning okay words have power and propagation meaning i'm making more so i am going to cut some of this off to do just that i'm also going to cut some of this off why because it's a lot of it it's a lot of it. It's a lot of it here. And I also have some down here. Like, let me, let's look down. When you look down here, you see this? You know what this is? This is more of that bee balm. I have so much. I was real loud there. They're going to call the people on me. So much. So, I'm going to start propagating that. I'm going to come to your questions real quick. We had one person saying, can you propagate ginger without cutting it into pieces like you can potatoes? I've heard that you can. I have not personally tried that. I feel like you can. Um, I just bury the whole thing and hope for the best. So this is ginger that I had from the convenience store or the grocery store rather somewhere. And I just let it root out here. It was growing in the house pretty good. And then the winter killed it because I didn't bring it in whole inside in time. I knew better. And it's growing back. Uh, let's see. You would love some bee bomb, A's nickels. If you are in the area, if you're in the triangle, let me know. Um, I am actually 6'2 and some change. So the people just say I'm 6'3. Bee bomb. Somebody said, are they good for um, pollinators? They are. They produce these beautiful flowers, inflorescence technically, because it's like a stalk. It has a bunch of little flowers over it. You should Google it, not right now, because you're looking at me right now. I need your views, right? But they make these beautiful flowers that are also delicious, right? Because you could eat that too. And um, the bees love them. The wasps love them. I know some of you don't like wasps. Please don't treat wasps like we treat uh, black women. We do not want to treat wasps like we treat black, treat black women because we treat wasps like they're dangerous and they're horrible and they are no more dangerous than bees. Yellow jackets are a different story, okay? So, I'm gonna do some vegetative propagation. I have a pair of scissors. These are clean enough for me. Make sure your scissors are clean. You can like wipe them off with a 10% bleach solution, um, some peroxide. I know some people, I don't know how this happened, but it's okay because when life gives you lemons, we keep going. So you can wipe it off with a peroxide solution, but bleach in most cases is just the best thing you could do um, because it kills a lot of different pathogens. And we're gonna start propagating once I'm not a, a lemon anymore. They must be something where you could swipe and cut on these, um, these uh, filters because I never click on the button. And one of these days, I'm gonna figure it out how these cut on. One of these days, boom. So again, Garden of Victoria is a series I'm gonna be doing. If you are seeing this, you know, put gardening victoriously in the comments if you have not already. And send this video to two people, okay? So, I have my scissors. They are clean enough. And what I am going to do is bring y'all in close because I want you to feel like you're out here with me. Again, you, most of you, y'all are not going to be this high. Most of you are going to be looking up like this. Whoops, your neck fell back. Most of you are going to be looking up at me like this, okay? Because most of you are five. <laughs> most of you are this tall. And you're going to be like, but please, Derek. <laughs> this is me looking at you. Let me let me show you how it's going to be when you're looking at I'm going to be like, you'll be like, please, Derek. 
I, I just want some goods. Because y'all are short. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's tall people magic. Um, so we're going to be doing some vegetative propagation of this bee balm. So what I'm going to do is, because I'm also harvesting this for some use indoors. Again, I got this giant one down here. Okay. I'm going to be more aggressive than you may want to be. I'm doing what's called a pass along plant right and with me doing this pass along plant i'm going to pass this along to other people and they get a piece of this this isn't something i propagated something i've had for a long time but this is a piece of plant that i could give to somebody and then they could give to somebody else and so on and so forth and then maybe a hundred years down the line after i'm long gone this plant still exists it's genetics more so than just what they propagated at wherever place i got it from right will still exist and it'll be some descendant of a plant I originally touched. It's beautiful, right? So we're gonna be doing this. I'm gonna grab this pair of scissors and I'm basically gonna cut about three or four inches long, okay? So inches matters when we're doing this. We don't wanna cut it too small because that's not useful, okay? I know some of you don't wanna hear that, but too small is a real thing, okay? These leaves that are off to the side, I'm gonna pluck I should have grabbed, I forgot to grab one thing, but I'm gonna make do the best way I can because I always forget one thing, but I'm gonna pluck these leaves off that are on the side. I only really want this top two whorls of leaves, like this, this, as little leaves as possible. Why am I doing that, right? I'm doing that because this plant is gonna be breathing and letting out water vapor and it doesn't have any roots to drag more water into it as of yet, right? So I don't want it to lose more than it's getting. So I'm gonna take these leaves off. What can you do with these leaves? It's a, it's a bee balm. You can do whatever you want with them. You can ground them up into a tea. I'm gonna put them in my pocket. You can ground them up into a tea. You can put them in your honey. You can do whatever you want to. Once I get these top two off, again, this is like three or four inches probably closer to five or six, but it's okay. We're not size queens here. I'm gonna put this into my cup of water that is off camera. Hey, plant pod, prothology pod. You know, it's good to see y'all. So I put it in my cup of water. We're reusing this cup. This is an old cup. We don't, I don't go to this place right now because they support genocide and I'm not for that. So we're gonna keep going. And it's just this easy. Again, I'm cutting right here. I'm trying to get a nice clean cut. I'm gonna pluck these leaves off. And because I know these grow quite rapidly, and I don't have an exact person I'm gonna give these to yet. <laughs> I haven't thought that far. I'm just gonna go ahead and do six. I have a seed tray that can basically take six of these babies. And from six, if I need more, I can get more. It takes about, sometimes for me, four to six weeks to actually see roots and growth. I'm gonna pour some of this water out because this is a lot more water than I thought I would need. There we go. When I'm done with these, for those of you who are just gonna watch quick and leave, I could leave it in this cup of water, change the water out like every week or two weeks whenever it looks nasty. And then once it gets roots that are like a half inch long, I could put it in some soil. I'm just gonna transplant these into a pot. And I'm not gonna show y'all that part because that'll make this video too long and I'm not gonna be up here all day today. So, thank you for running and guessing my height. I guess you'll be watching me when I sleep tonight, huh? So, <laughs> I'm just messing. So, this is your chance to ask me questions comments, concerns, gardening victoriously. If you see the videos where I post, you can also post your questions up there because I'll talk about different subjects. Even if it's not about the subject, you can post your questions up there. I don't know six people local that garden just one. Here's the thing. Find a community garden. A community garden always needs something from you. Two things. Money and plants. They may be able to get some seeds. I didn't even touch it. I didn't even touch this. I just... I just looked away. I don't know how this happened. Zuckerberg just wants me to be uh, an emoji minstrel. That's what it is. 
See if I can cut this off again. Luckily enough, if I was like the old people I know, they'd be like this. How you cut this off? Somebody help me to cut. Somebody help me cut this. <laughs> Somebody help me cut this off. Okay, let's see. Can that water method work for most all herbs? Will it work for mostly other leafy plants too? Herbs, for the most part, you can propagate in a water propagation. So your herbs you would think of are some of them you can do it, um, which may be like your mints, anything that's in the mint family. So mint, um, you can do it with basil, you can do it with rosemary, you can do it with lavender. I haven't had success with lavender. Um, they seem to just rot on me. And I don't like that too much. And um, I don't grow a lot of other herbs. I grow a lot of mints. I really love mints. Mints make me happy. Mint, rosemary, and lavender. I have oregano now you could do it with. Um, hey, Milo. Hey, Milo. Milo is a phenomenal person. Um, I was going through. Was that a bird? There's a bird nest somewhere behind me, dang it. I have another baby mama, birdie baby mama, and I'm so pissed off. This is unscheduled, unfettered magicness. I don't even know if y'all heard that as it flew by. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all see that? It was a little bird, and it's somewhere in here. And now I'm going to have to really clear off this patio. Be like, Do I have any eggs over here? That almost ruined my whole day. Milo is a great person because he helped me out a while back. I was going to go into a longer story about it, but now I'm pissed off because I have this birdie baby mama behind me. Those of you who have been following me for a while, I've had birds on my patio for on and off for the last couple of years, right? They'll come up, they seem, you know, all well-to-do meaning, and then they leave me with all these egg children, okay? They drop them at my doorstep, okay? And somebody else has said that too, load of rocks. You keep going, you're going to get blocked. The, <laughs> then then I, I look. And then there's just this this bird nest. Is that it? I wish I could have seen where it came from, and I was right in front of it, so I can't even play the video back. I don't know if y'all saw the bird. I don't know if y'all saw the bird. That makes me so mad. Because then I have to tread carefully on my own patio because they want to be like... We own this, and it's like you don't own nothing up here. I'm gonna clean off this patio again. It's okay. Um, Lona rocks for those of you who are like, why are you gonna block her? She said, this is because you're creating a paradise that animals want to be a part of, and they want to be a part of my world. But their name is not Ariel, and I am not the Little Mermaid, Ursula, or uh, King Eric. My name is Derek, and they don't belong in this patio. They don't pay this rent. They don't belong here. Okay, I'm going to build a wall. I'm going to be the best wall. I'm going to be the real good wall and keep them away. What's the correct way to propagate rosemary? Because I keep trying. With rosemary, it can get woody. Right? Woody meaning like literally like wood. So you have to do it with like new green growth. I have a bird's nest in my crown of thorns with 94 eggs. That sucks. Who better? Baby mama. Uh -huh. We're going to skip over this baby mama drama I got. So again, this is pretty much how you propagate it. I also have, um, and we were talking about propagating lemon balm before a bird flew from behind me and threw my whole mojo off. Gardening Victoriously, again, is a series I have where I'm going to be talking about how to actually, you know, have great success with gardening. I am not going to give y'all any of these dumb garden hacks that the people give that y'all know I hate. Because a lot of people, they do it to get quick views. They quickly get people who are sharing it like, look at this. And this guy I'm, I'm really catching on to now who is the worst almost on the same scale. He must be related to uh, y'all's cousin Hamilton because he had a video, you get this cinnamon sugar and you shake it on the yard and then your ants will never come back. And it's like, hmm, but all that could be washed away in rain. The ants are small enough where they may not be able to like discern a cinnamon particle from, from a, a, a sugar particle. But I don't think cinnamon sugar would just like scare them away. And how much cinnamon sugar are you going to spread over your yard? Am I going to be on Jane Perone's podcast? I believe so. We were supposed to have something set up. I think something happened up in both of our lives where we're going to have to reschedule. But that is a thing I want to do. Um, does my elderberry do well? It just, it just does. There's not really a well for it. 
Um, in order for me to really get some berries, I think I need like a bigger pot or just in the ground. Um, making sure I'm answering all y'all's questions. I'm waving at everybody coming in. Again, gardening victoriously. Me, a black person, talking about it. It's great. I got this bee balm. One, two, three, four. I need two more stems. I'm going to be propagating it and giving it away to those somebody within the uh, triangle. And I'm just snipping it off. I'm taking off these bottom two stems. Hey, people that are coming in here. Some of y'all are like, I don't even remember following this guy. Y'all probably all like that. Boom. So I'm going to put this in. I swear it's like I hear it behind me. It's okay. So I have five stems. I'm going to get a sixth. And again, I'm just getting, showing you what I'm actually doing here. Boop. There we go. I'm just getting like four or five inches of a stem. Making sure it has some leaves. We don't want a lot of leaves. And even with some of these, I may go through and take over these leaves that are over an inch big and take them off as well. These leaves I'm going to dry or do something with. I don't know yet, um, but I'm going to figure it out. Rinse them off because they've been in my pocket and make some good tea, right? So I'm going to propagate those six, okay? When we see that I'm glistening right now, I'm shining in the sun because the sun is shining on my face, right? This is why I love to be outside. So I'm going to garden victoriously in a second way. I have these plants that I'm going to give away. Hey, Wade, y'all. He didn't all the way say this, but I, I feel like I imagined Wade telling me this. Wade told me that he was going to give me a little pup of that variegated banana that he had, and he was going to mail it to me because he's in he's in Florida, and he owes it to me because Florida sucks as far as the government is concerned. And he was like, Derek, you know how Wade talks? He was like, Derek, I'm right well going to give you one of these banana pups that are variegated. And I said, really, Wade? And he said, yeah. Now get me a box of cereal. He loves cereal for some reason. I don't know why Wade is as into cereal as he is. Hopefully he's still here so I didn't waste that good impersonation of him. I've been listening to his voice for a while. Wade is kind of, now Wade, if you actually still here but I don't see you in this top, I'm going to be real upset. I'm going to have to send you this part of the video. Wade was like, give me a box of cereal and I'll go ahead and give you that piece of plant. And I said, really? What? And he said, yeah, just a box of cereal. I said, what type of cereal? He said, you give me some tricks or some kicks. Or some corn pops or some sugar smacks. I love the sugar smacks. That's what he said. Anywho, we got these plants. I did all that and he's not even here. I got these plants that I'm going to propagate again. I'm just keeping them in the water to keep them alive while I'm up here talking to you all. I'm going to take them inside and put them into some soil and into my mini greenhouse. That's going to be the next thing I talk about. Me making a mini greenhouse without using that Ikea thing and me doing it for... Maybe $40, if that, because it's like the heating mat and light are really the only thing I pay for. The aquarium part I get for like super cheap. So I, I be doing the stuff. So I'm going to take these babies, bring y'all closer, okay, so y'all can see. I'm going to take these babies and I'm going to actually pull a couple out. So this was a bee bomb from yesteryear. I put this into the soil. This is a pot I got from a friend of mine, Delphine Sellers. I was supposed to give it back. And then I was going to patch the pot up. There was a lot of things that happened. I was going to patch the pot up. And then I did. And then I, I cracked the pot because it dropped. And there was a lot of things going on in life. So I'm going to eventually just keep this pot and just get her another one eventually. Um, I feel like when people give me stuff, I have great intentions. And then it doesn't always make it back to them, which is sad. So I'm going to just take a couple of these babies out because this big one is going to get as gigantic as this giant one down here eventually, right? Also, we see there's a mint right here. I'm trying to let it grow out. This almost seems like another berries and cream, which means I had seeds that came out and spread, and we're just going to do it like this. I want y'all to feel like y'all are me, I guess, so we're going to do this. Y'all remember when we would watch Blue's Clues and Steve would start drawing? He would start drawing and you would kind of be like in his hands. So this is this is not super freaky at all. Let me turn around so I can get closer. Boop. 
Boom, there we go. So I can reach my hands like this. So I'm gonna be pulling up a couple of these smaller babies here, here, and here. You're, it's like uh, being John Malkovich, is that the name of that movie? So <laughs> I'm gonna pull a couple of these plants up. I'm gonna be very careful not to break the stems because then the whole plant is pretty much gone if I like cut the stems too much. They could probably bounce back, but I'm not gonna risk it. And I'm gonna be careful not to damage a lot of the root system. Somebody says, is bee balm grow like mint? It does. So I start off with one plant. I believe I moved that one plant right here. That one plant right here had a lot of seeds. Those seeds went all over the patio. So now those seeds are right here. And also right, whoop, turns you right back to me. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Got to stop your neck from falling like that. And right here. So we don't want you to, there we go, right here, right here, and seeds that also went right here. And there were also seeds of another um, balm that I had that fell downstairs. Hey, Axel, the swoon. So, zoom in a little bit, bingo bongo. So I'm gonna get these plants and propagate them. I don't really use shovels and stuff with my hands. I just like to just get my hands in it and get it kind of, you know, a little dirty. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna use my finger and kind of dig under the soil to lift up the whole plant. The soil is loose enough where I can do that and get it up just like that. It's that easy, right? Now, I'm gonna put this in a pot to the side so that way I can collect these and put these in soil in the house. Hey, Renata! So I'm gonna take these two that are over here and again, I'm taking these to prop to grow bigger and to give away, okay? So, I'm just taking my finger. You can take a growing apparatus and you could do the same. You could literally get your hand. This is a piece of the broken pot. And I just dig under. There's not a big root system developed because he's not gigantic yet. Also, this pot doesn't get a lot of water. So I can do that here. And I'm gonna take this last one. So I'm gonna have nine plants I'm gonna give away. And it looks like this one is also kind of on a rock. So these are beautiful plants. I really love the mints family because they just do so much for me. So I have three plants that have a decent root system already that I'm going to grow indoors, right? And then I have these other plants that don't have a root system that I'm gonna propagate. And these are just cuttings, okay? Now again, on the patio, there are a plethora of other plants I have here. I need to propagate my oregano in the future. I need to do something with it. I got it because I was like, oh, this is so cool. And I don't really do anything with it. Like, and it survived kind of being neglected over the winter. And I should have also took care of the stevia I had. I need to get another stevia. So, I don't know what that was on my hand. But it looks like I got another birdie baby mom. I'm going to have to figure out where it's hiding on the patio. I'm going to have to do it like either early in the morning or late in the afternoon. So, this has been Gardening Victoriously. This has been like the second episode. We're going to say the second episode, the live episode. Again, for those of you coming in just now. Back in the day, garden, Victory Gardens was a big deal, right? Because if you don't use a lot of it, you could freeze it. I could freeze this bee balm, um, but I usually just like mix it into a honey. The oregano, you smart. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about me using this oregano. Maybe I'll have like a, a mini story, like a B plot of the oregano. So Victory Gardens back in the day were a big thing because... It was a way to really show off your garden, grow some good food, and to build community, right? George Washington Carver is one of the people believed to coin the term, black, black biologist, and I am showing you how to garden victoriously. So that way, you can have the belief system that you can do it, okay? A lot of this stuff just happens by accident for me. Like, a lot of these things I got, you can have access to, okay? So, example. This right here. These, these Asiatic lilies you're seeing, I got them from Walmart several years ago. 
several years ago I got them from Walmart and they've taken over. It was like $15 worth of bulbs. I put them in, boom, right? You can do the same thing. This sunflower was in a pack that was $2. I don't even, I didn't plant it there. The birds did. Either the birds or the squirrels did or a seed fell out and just went there. Same with this seed that was right here, right? The mint is literally like $4 for any of these that you see. And they come back year to year. I pay $4 one time and I have them forever unless the winter gets really bad. And if I really wanted to, I can bring some snippings in and keep them alive over the winter, right? And lastly, my cabbage collards. And you can see that. We're going to walk around like me. This cabbage collard, one here and one over the ledge here. I got those for free. My buddy Josie gave me those seeds. So you can do this too. You can garden victoriously and you can have some success in your yard. And I want you to know if ever you're like, I got questions, I got comments, I got concerns. Hit me up in the comments. You can DM me, but it's better to just, you know, throw them in the comments. That way other people can see your questions and we can get to a real answer. So y'all got anything else for me before I leave? If you want to see this video later, it'll still be posted here on my Instagram and here on my YouTube because the video is going to be posted there in roughly five minutes from me clicking done. So if y'all got any questions, comments, concerns for me, I'm a whole plant biologist. I'm in North Carolina, zone, North Carolina Zone 8. I'm on a patio. I'm not in a yard. There's no dirt. Like, this is wood. There's dirt on the wood, but there's no, I'm not doing in-ground planting. Um, I will do that one day where I'll show y'all that too as part of the series, but I have to go to other people's places. Um, one person said, how good a growth lamp? It depends on how much money you have. If you have a little bit of money, they can be a little bit good. If you have a lot of bit money, they can be phenomenal. And growth lamps are a great way to not only have a good light source that may not be an equal replacement for the sun, but they will be good enough for government work. But they can also help you to sometimes extend your season, depending on how you're growing. Like if you're growing in a chamber, in a greenhouse, they can be phenomenal to um, help you to get good growth all year round. Because basically, real quick thing about light, a couple of quick facts, your plants are eating certain types of light to grow, right? Certain colors of light, right? So different reds and blues and different combinations can impact how your plants grow and how they look, right? You can have... Three plants that are the exact same, they're twins, but you grow them under different light conditions, different light colors and feedings, and they look completely different, right? Like you could have a child that's malnourished and a child that was fed the best food, they're all the same, they're twins, and they look different. It's that same concept, right? During the year, depending on where you are, like here in North Carolina, the light intensity and the spectrum can kind of shift, right? Which impacts your growth. In addition to the other things that impact like light, like clouds. Oh, there's another cicada. There's a bunch of cicadas out here, y'all. Clouds or the storming or whatever can impact how much light you have. So grow lights are phenomenal. I do use one, two, three, four. I have like four grow lights in the house. I can do a video on that in my next garden victoriously. Okay? You just remind me. You remind me. If you don't see it in a month, you remind me half left. Okay? Um, how good are grow lamps? And I can show you, if you DM me after this, I can show you what I use. So you can see it early, and then I can show the rest of you um, in the future. What are you excited to plant this growing season? I'm excited to plant my tomatoes. I have a GMO tomato, and I know some of you don't like that because you don't like genetically modified organisms because you don't truly understand them. And I'm excited to grow that. And I love growing tomatoes anyway because I love tomatoes. Um... I also have some flowers that I'm excited for, and these uh, bombs, I think they are, not bee bombs, they are bee bombs, lemon, I gotta look them back up, but it's a Minarda, I believe, the, the uh, species is, I have them inside, and there was a bunch of seedlings that fell downstairs, and I did y'all a video, right, I showed you me taking them, and I was like, I'm gonna save these, I just looked earlier today when I went to church, and I seen more. There's more down there. So I'm excited for all of my herbs. I also need to get some stevia and really start getting deeper into that because I love growing my own stevia. Any other questions y'all have before I leave out of here? I'm a whole plant biologist.
So I talked about my new series. This video is going to be posted on my Instagram. It'll be titled something like Gardening Victoriously, Episode 2. Instead of saying Part 2, I should say Episode 2 because it's Episode. This is my own TV series. Why didn't I say that at the beginning? It's okay. We're going to pretend like I did. Right? So we propagated some stuff. These, we're going to see them later. We're going to see these later. If you're in the triangle or you visit, Josie, you know I got you later. Um, I have bee bombs. I'm going to be propagating. I'm going to be propagating mints to give away to do for classes because I do love to do a class and talk about a plant. If you want me to be on any podcast or show, hit me up. If you're not following me, go ahead and click the button. Follow me and subscribe me, right? Hit me up. If you want me to be on a show, you want me to come to an event, let me know. I don't turn anybody down. Unless a few things are not right. And if they are not right, you will get left behind talking to me. Update on the birds. The birds, I don't have much of an update on. I just seen one. If you, I don't know if you were here earlier. Some, one flew from behind me. It flew behind me, a little small one. It looks like the one I saw several years ago. Not several years ago, like a couple of years ago, it was a type of wren. I can't remember what it is. I would love to see some golden roses. I don't have any golden roses. Um, I had some roses that I was going to try to keep and, and do some stuff with, but depression sucks. And that's going to be another thing. I'm going to show you all my failures on this as well, okay? Um, what else? We did a lot of stuff. I talked about a lot of stuff. Podcast coming out soon. Melanated Botanist. Botany. Got to remember the title. Melanated Botany. Me and Stephen Jaunty. Um, I showed y'all the patio. I'm cleaning out. The first episode is already live. This is second episode. Hey, Bull City Homebrew. One day I got to talk to y'all and do a class. Um, jackets. I don't, know, I don't know what we're talking about. Hey, Steve Murray. Are you talking about yellow jackets or the birds? The birds are jackets? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to jump off of this. I'm trying to give y'all time to type because I know, uh, oh, golden roses, you were being silly. I'm trying to give y'all time because more of y'all are coming in and I'm trying to also leave. So I, I hate to do this to y'all. The whole video is going to be on Instagram, on YouTube and Instagram, right? So if you're coming in here, I'm about to leave. You can put the video on two times speed and watch the video. You can skip through it or whatever, right? But you will see more of me. I'll hopefully try to do a live weekly to show my while I'm doing the growing season. And to show you something, whether it's me planting inside, planting outside, doing a house plant, doing something. Um, remember, you too can garden victoriously. No matter how you feel about yourself, you don't have to have a green thumb because that's gangrene. And my thumbs are not green, but I'll be doing a good job. So enjoy yourselves. Have a blessed Sunday. Keep growing. Keep cultivating yourself. And I will talk to you all later.